Yeah. Did you guys have a good time? Had a blast. Um, I, sh I shared a, one of the videos of me sword fighting with my friends with Bastion. I think you liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> seems really scary <laughs> and dangerous. It's, it's not so dangerous. It just looks dangerous. If I was doing it, it would be dangerous. I would like definitely accidentally stab someone in the eye or. Yeah, I think you'd be a terror. All, everyone would run away in fear and just screaming. Um, I think I think actually you'd be, you'd have amazing warrior spirit. It's more like the coordination factor plus me is like not a good mix, but. Working. Really? You, yeah, but perfect. wait, you've done you've done dance before, right? Like if there's not like a thing that I need, like if it's just my own body, it's okay. But when there's like external factors involved, it's like, right? Yeah. <laughs> Right, right, right. But no, I haven't um, dance actually, but I would love to get into it more. Huh. Yeah. One second. Oh. They are open till six p.m. Um. Yeah. Uh. Hey, mom. When do they open in the morning? Uh, I can make that work. Let's do 7 a.m. Let's do 7 a.m. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Now, thankfully, we should not have any distractions. No worries. Uh, it, is, it is, like, remarkably hard to find uninterrupted time. Um, how, was, how was family Thanksgiving stuff? Um, the, we just didn't do any family stuff really it was like bastion and my sister came over um but like my immediate family they're all in scattered around colorado my grandparents are in arizona and so they all just kind of did their own thing and yeah it was really low-key which is nice yeah Good. being able to slow down by itself is such a gift um having friends over was amazing um but I'm an ambivert and the extroversion was like so exhausting. Like by the time they left, I was like, Oh, I can be a nerd again. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't, I felt like rejuvenated in all these other like dimensions, but I didn't get the normal like rest of a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. That's needed for sure. We watched like, well, we attempted to watch all three episodes of Hobbit in a row. <laughs> That was literally all of Thanksgiving. But oh it was my God. make it past like one and a half because they're really long. <laughs> I bet watching movies with Bastion is a hoot. I bet he is so fun to watch movies with. It's either fun or really annoying. I'm like, sh I don't need to know which shots have bad VFX. Like, I'm trying to watch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's good, yeah. But I bet he like makes amazing sounds. Like when somebody gets yes. their head chopped off, I'm sure he goes like, oh, or something like that. <laughs> For sure. It's definitely more exciting. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, cool. So uh, update on my side. Uh, things are going really well business-wise. We just closed um, uh, 150K this month from uh, existing and new investors. And then sales, we doubled to 16 companies and we're already on our way to doubling again in December. That's awesome. Um, operations is like straining at the load. Um, but, um, uh, and so we're putting out fires every day, but overall, like fundamental progress is happening and, and we're, 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 the architecture is holding strong. So finally seems like, uh, the journey from hell is over a journey through hell is over. That's and, uh, and I, I almost have like enough PTSD from just failing so many times, um, that I don't trust success at all. Um, so I'm, I'm fighting my own paranoia a bit, but, uh, I'm also trying to like, not, if I, if I work too hard right now, I am just going to overwhelm my team. Um, uh, we're in a position where like, there's not much remaining for me to do other than sell and we're already doing so well in sales. So I'm trying to find other outlets for my energy. Yeah. Um, and that's my, my business update um personal update just uh nothing much other than these like weird hobbies and uh some reading and cool. um a little bit more time to like uh i've been in la a bunch so a little bit more time to socialize um that's nice yeah 
So yeah, so let's let's do this interview. Um, in terms of style, uh, the whole the whole my whole attitude about this is that this is a conversation I would have anyways, and I mm -hmm. want it to be as natural as a phone call. And it's just the difference is we're letting the world eavesdrop. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of subject matter, um, I uh, I've decided to call these the series of interviews black box interviews because I'm trying to to peer into the black box of decision making that is impossible to talk about um, right. because it's very very difficult to put words around at all and um, I don't like the typical interview because it puts the the person being interviewed in this position of being like the expert who's supposed to right. uh, have all the answers but uh, it it doesn't talk about the way they got to the answers and and like the way they process reality on like a day to day moment by moment you know, um, level. And that's where the magic actually happens. And I'm particularly interested in your perspective, um, because, uh, you are so different than me. And yet like, uh, we like, I, I feel like every time you, you give me an insight, it feels like a gem that I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to explore that, um, cause I know that there's a very different way that you you process reality and yet somehow the, the end result like makes a lot of sense to me. Um, other than that, I generally like to lean into like the weird, the uncomfortable um, and the confusing. Um, so don't in any way feel like you need to be polished or even make sense or, um, or, or, or like have answers. Uh, it's mostly just about like asking questions together and seeing where we arrive. Yeah. Um, so I hope you did. I hope you did not prepare. I hope, uh, good. Okay, cool. All right, great. Are you ready to start? <laughs> yeah. Any questions before we start? No, let's do it. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so Kendra, uh, when was the last time you were confused and talk to me about the feeling of confusion? Okay. I'm confused. Like every 10 minutes about something new. <laughs> oh my God. Every 10 minutes. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh um, my god. <laughs> I think I'm constantly confused because I see stuff and people explain stuff and then I don't understand it from my perspective a lot of the time. So I guess what confusion feels like is being in the gap between what I know and what I see and understanding those are both truths, but not really being able to like line up how they're both truths. Mm. And like, I think it's often living in the should space kind of for me, a lot of confusion is I should think about it this way, or I should do this or I should do that, or they should do that. But then it's that's not what feels right and so then there's confusion there mm -hmm. um so can you think of a specific example uh because i i feel that way too i feel like i should understand you know what the heck they just said and what it means um but then i don't and i don't really want to ask about it or i should understand what this document i'm looking at says but i don't um <laughs> but but let's let's talk about a specific example because then we could we could talk about the example I'm trying to think of one that would be good, makes sense. Um, I guess one thing was that I was confused about was I had like a, you know, on in the media, there's all this crazy talk about the Harvey Weinstein madness and like yeah, all the sex scandals. Yeah, and like I I, I posted something on Facebook that this this journalist said men are scum and um <laughs> and yeah it's like it's like a lot of noise about this a lot of noise these yeah. days so i guess my confusion is around how we've turned like what could be a positive movement into like a really unhealthy really negative thing that is and we're empowering that as like a society and like as media mm. and I, and I think like a lot of my confusion is around like how, how do I have a voice in it? Because I mean, like I've had stuff like that happen to me multiple times in the tech world and in the film world. And, but I don't feel powerless because like I 
said no and I walked away in that, those situations. And like every woman can do that at any time. And for some reason, like the, talk, the conversation is around a lot. I don't know, it's just like women have no power, but no, women just think they don't have any power. That's the problem. And uh, so, yeah, my confusion is like, in yeah, my- What's the confusion here? What's the confusion? Yeah. yeah, the confusion is, so I started writing a piece about it. And then my confusion was like, around how I have a right, or maybe do I even need a right to say something about it? Because mm. the way the conversation is framed already doesn't allow for a different opinion in many ways. Or, that's right. Yes. Um, and that, and my, that makes you feel silenced or like you don't have a right to speak or think for yourself about it. Yeah. And also part of my confusion is like, can I participate in this movement without participating in the movement? If that makes sense. Like I would love to speak about it, but not necessarily like name all the people who I've been harassed by or, you know, do all the things that people are doing in response. Um, yeah. And so instead of like, writing my article or talking about it, I just feel confused about it and not sure on which way to approach it. And then I do nothing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, let's talk about, uh, so I have many opinions about this subject and it'd be fun to talk about them, but I don't, I'm actually, as much as I would like to explore your opinions about it and share mine and blah, 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 I'm actually, I wanna dig into the confusion. Yeah. So. Um, so now that you have this confusion, I think I understand the confusion. Um, uh, so are you self-aware of these confusions as you, as you, uh, experience them? Or are they mostly subconscious background level stuff where it's just like, it sort of bubbles up over days or weeks? I think I'm pretty self-aware of them. And it, like, usually if I feel confused, like I know that's what's happening. Um, and sometimes yeah. it's like, maybe it's just like a way of not making a decision in a way. Like confusion can be like, just it's like a lot like resistance so it's just a space where i'm just deciding not to decide because <laughs> i'm not sure what's right i don't know what's right mm -hmm. so um mm -hmm. yeah 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 so it's not not knowing what to do not being quite sure where you stand okay and then you have a glimmer like an intuition because obviously you're able to express it to me if you're able to put it into words, you're already less confused. Um, and and the position you want to take is somehow uh, participating in the movement, but not not the not doing it the way the movement is doing it. So being able to talk about sexual harassment and state state positions, um, positions that may agree or disagree with the the party line, um, but talk about the issue in your own way. Um, and, and so it sounds like you already kind of know what you want to do, um, but what is the blocker or the remaining confusion? Because um, I'm interested in how you answer these, these um, uh, open questions. Yeah. Um, I think the block is like self-judgment. And that's also mm -hmm. part of the confusion as well is like, How do you judge yourself? Like, uh, uh, there's many ways. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which one should I start with? <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> Choose from the list. Yeah. I think for this one, it's like, there's some, I guess there's some bravery in naming people, like in naming Harvey mm. Weinstein, there's some like bravery there. And I don't feel like that's something I would want to do. Like, I just, I don't, maybe in the moment it matters, but if it's something that happened years ago or whatever, like it just to me doesn't seem purposeful. Like it doesn't seem effective, but there is some bravery there. And so there's like a piece of me that's like, am I just afraid to do that? Or am I really legitimately just don't think it makes sense? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, so I kind of judge myself a little yeah. bit yeah for like not following the path that's already carved out of like let's like just clean the slate you know um 
Mm -hmm. And part of you feels like it would be brave and part of you feels like it would be pointless and sort of maybe destructive. Um, and yeah. And, and it's also a little bit icky in a way because it's just like media grabbing at this point and like, yeah, there's no, I don't get that really either. That confuses me too. Yeah. Um, but what, so, so, so when you, you parse through these things, like, um, uh, when you make these decisions, say, to, to, to speak out, to say something, um, how are you making them? Like, are you, are you sitting there, uh, on a chair meditating and closing your eyes and like, or are you talking out loud with Bastion or are you, um, or do you have other friends that you sort of use in, in as interlocutors or do you sort of like process it somehow like lightning in your mind and like make a decision? It's always like a feeling first, like a, just a gut feeling or just a feel. Yeah. Just a feeling. Sometimes it's just like a, a thing, like an essence of the thing. <laughs> I'm like, there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a thing here. <laughs> I don't know what the thing is yet. Mm -hmm. And then that thing like goes on paper somewhere. I have like weird list of stuff everywhere. goes on one of my lists or. You're like, a note taker. Do you, do you sort of journal note take throughout the day? Yeah. I, um, I like my sister calls it <laughs> excelling your life because like my whole life is on Excel sheets. Um, <laughs> no, you journal on Excel. <laughs> kind no of. way. Well, no way. I journal, journal, but like then I never read it. So, but when there's like something tangible or something that is usable from what I journal, then it goes onto one of my sheets, like one of my. Mm. Excel so it's kind of like my organized journal. Um, it's more like my notes uh, and more actionable things. Um, so I don't remember how we, we got off topic, but basically like, yeah, I. Um, how, how you make the decision to do something and how on a, on a, like a normal, like normally you make a decision to like, like a decision like this about how to get involved yeah. or how you sort through these confusions. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a feeling. And then I put whatever that feeling is on paper. And then mm -hmm. if it stays in my mind and it grows, then I'm like, okay, it's not going away. And then that's when I feel like I need to do something about it. <laughs> Cause sometimes mm -hmm. I get ideas, but then they're just ideas and like, they're fine and they go and I forget them. They but come and they go in one ear out the other. Yeah. And so if it's sticky and then it's growing, I like see something relevant in something I'm reading or when I'm out in the world or whatever, I just like add to the thing. And soon after yeah. time, the thing takes shape. And then I'm like, okay, now I have a real. Yeah. yeah. It starts with like, it starts with like a little snowball. And then like pretty soon you've got like a big, big snowball and it's like an avalanche and you can run with it and you know what it is. Um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when you, when you actually make decisions, do you, uh, are you, would you describe yourself as a fast decision maker or as a slow decision maker? Um, or, uh, as, as like, um, an intuitive person, decision maker, or a logical decision maker. Um, I would say slow and intuitive, um, probably, but it kind of depends on the decision. Like, yeah, that, but that's probably more my default. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I used to be more of a logical decision maker and, and the, like the more I've like gotten to know myself, I realize that I like the idea of doing what sounds right or what's like researched or whatever, because it feels like I have more control and I can make more sense of it. But then when I make decisions that way, then they usually don't work out that great. <laughs> Mm. and when I just make decisions based on how I feel about something which is like completely on a, like I can't explain it a lot of the time like why that would make sense those things tend to work out better um and I'm slow because so, so there's an interesting like you're so yeah keep going I didn't mean to interrupt oh no it's okay um I think I'm slow because I'm still learning to trust the intuition part uh yeah, yeah. that's so I'm right kind of like feeling it out like is this a real feeling or <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, I'm judging myself for interrupting you because of course like what what you what you ended up saying is exactly what i wanted to ask you about which is the trust part um mm -hmm. when you when you over time 
you're making decisions, you're seeing results, you're making decisions, you're seeing results, you're making decisions, you're seeing results. And so you form a kind of gut sense for uh, when it works and when it doesn't work and which decisions were great decisions, which decisions were bad decisions. Yeah. And uh, you have a kind of like internal calculator. But this process is not normally um, scientific. Um, and I, I use that word I, with no small degree of sarcasm. Uh, it's like, I think actually it's quite scientific um, because you, uh, you're trying things out and you're, 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 you're observing results. It would be really hard to, to, to like, and, and obsessive and a little weird uh, to like gather all this data and spend your life like analyzing the results and somehow like trying to improve your decision making process. But it may be in the true spirit of science, you are, you are kind of being a scientist about this. So how would you describe the way you evaluate the results and it, like learn over time? Yeah. Again, it's like based on feeling. Um, If it's like, if, if I feel proud of what I did or that choice, and even if it didn't like look like success or whatever, but if I feel proud about it and good about how things worked out or d didn't even sometimes, um, I, I, it's very hard to explain because it really is like just a feeling. Um, hmm, what's the best way to explain? Yeah. So I can tell like after the fact, like if it wasn't successful because I, there's like a long string of time where I'm like justifying something, like rationalizing it. And I think when I make more of an intuitive decision, there's none of that. It's just, I'm just like more in flow. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not like, mm -hmm. and there's less resistance. There's less struggle. Like things are just easier. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot about, I guess, ease and. Mm -hmm. Are there any, are there any situations where you do the hard thing as opposed to the easy thing? Um, yeah. Um, by ease, I don't, hmm. can you clarify what you mean by that? I don't know what I mean by okay. that. Cause I think, uh, yeah. So the hard thing sometimes is the easy thing. <laughs> that's interesting what do you yeah. mean uh for me because a lot of times i think i'm used to this feeling of like struggle or like it has to be difficult or you have to work really hard to earn something um so when something comes easily meaning i didn't have to struggle for it it's, it's hard because I don't know how to like be okay with it. I almost feel like I didn't earn it. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. It does make sense. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and I think too, it's often hard to make a decision and just be like, I'm making this decision because I feel like it and not because like of all these factors that sound like it's a great idea mm -hmm. um, or, you know, it looks good on the outside, but maybe, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's easy to make a decision that other people approve of. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of times I think my choices that are more intuitive are things that people are like, why would you do that? That's just not a great idea. And yet they feel easy. Um, so right. you, you're, you're, uh, you're like able, you, you're able to see some kind of pixie dust that the rest of us can't see. So for you, it's easy to follow the pixie dust. And we're looking at you going, what the heck is she doing? That looks really hard. That's a really strange decision, but she's following the pixie dust. Where is that pixie dust coming from? So uh, let's talk about an example. Um, I saw you uh, leave uh, food and tech and fashion, like leave basically three industries where you had a uh, grounding in yeah. and become an actress. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and that was a kind of amazing transformation to watch but you acted like oh yeah this is whatever I, I would just do it's obvious like this is my path and yeah. talk to me about the pixie dust that like led you down that path yeah um 
That's a good question. It's, it was basically like first an experiment for me to do something that was very terrifying. Um, and there was something on a really deep level where I felt like I needed it in a way, like I needed to give into like this form of creative expression that like demanded like a lot of vulnerability and a lot of like basically everything that I'm super terrified to do, <laughs> which is just like being this, like being seen, being vulnerable, um, like connecting with people like strangers at a deep level, like all this stuff. I just didn't have like for a majority of my life in a lot of ways and I felt like I needed it. So it was really more of a personal thing, like just to help me get over a lot of fear and anxiety. So you were doing the hard thing, you're doing the hard thing, but why did the pixie dust tell you to do the hard thing? Cause it was an easy decision. Um, because I, like, the universe just sort of sent me that way from multiple different angles. And then I was like, okay, like, ten, 10 factors in my life have, like, directed me to this path. Like, you can't really ignore that. It's when the things outside of your control, like, send you to something you know deep down you need or want. Um, that, that is what I want to understand. Those, like, 10 signals. I have the same thing. It's like these weird signals, like it's yeah. bread, breadcrumbs, pixie dust. I don't know. There's these signals and you can totally pay attention to them. It's like, yeah. oh, so-and-so said this. Oh, so-and-so said that to me. Oh, like I had this idea when I was in the shower and like these, these things like you talked about, they go from like snowball to like big snowball to avalanche pretty quickly. And you would need to be you need to really turn off your intuitive mind in order to not see that like you were being sent in that direction. And like yeah. the easiest thing was just to do like obey the command, but it's almost like a spiritual command or like a voice or something. Yeah. But where does it come from? It's so weird. The, it's all like the, the world. Like it's just like an energy thing, I think. Yeah. But, but like uh, I get what you mean, but like I also, don't because like I, I know I know it's like yeah it's an energy thing but like what does that even mean what is going on I think if you are a tiny bit open these opportunities these things are around us all the time mm. for whatever you want to do like the internet you can access literally anything and this if you live in a city or even if you don't like there's all kinds of people mm. and there's all kinds of experiences and so I guess at a deep sense, it's probably something that I always wanted to do, but I just wasn't open to it. So then when you finally become open to it, you start to see it. It's like that Prius effect or whatever, where if you buy a blue Prius, then you only see blue Priuses on the road. It's kind of like that. Yeah. It's those little signs are always there. We're just not open to them until we're ready for them. And yeah. Yeah. So, so, you're a very open person. I think like, I see that you're like w uh, open to the signs. Um, do you get more than you can handle? Uh, like, here's a story for me. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a little break. Um, so um, when I came, when I left San Francisco and came down to San Diego and I was staying at my grandparents ranch in the middle of nowhere, uh, I needed like, it was great. I had no costs. Uh, my grandma was feeding me um, and I didn't even have to pay for my $5 latte in the morning. Um, but I needed something to do. So I said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to like get into some weird hobbies. So I got into like sword fighting and archery and, and then I started fencing with my cousins and they're martial artists and as well, they, they have black belts. I've got a black belt. So um, when we started fencing, it was only natural for us to bring martial arts into it. And we were doing it with like these, these, uh, we weren't doing it with traditional fencing weapons. We're doing it with these new polyprene synthetic swords and with new cool gear. And we're like, Oh, this could be a new sport. MMA sword fighting. How cool would this be? <laughs> and, and then, and then I remember literally having a phone call with my friend Nicholas and saying, I feel like the gods have cursed me, Nicholas. Like uh, 
why do they burden me with such inspiration? Like, I feel like I could start a sport, but I don't have time to start a sport. I have this other thing over here and it's so annoying. It's like, why do I get these? Like, what is the point of inspiration when there's nothing to do about it? Like I, it's, it would be, it would be irresponsible for me to do something about it. So I, I just, he's like, you know what? He, he gave me some really wise answer. Like just wait, be patient, see what happens. Um, like a couple months later, this last week, uh, my friend in LA, who's a total master of creating social movements, uh, Bronco, he, he like, he really wanted to do this with me and he got into it. He's like, dude, there needs to be a company to do this thing. And, uh, I don't know if it'll end up happening, but yeah. the fact that it's like spreading and that other people are seeing it, then I like understood what Nick was telling me is that you never know what you're putting out into the world and you never know what you're part in. And the important thing is just to be obedient to what he calls the call. Um, and it's like, just, you're just obeying the call. You don't need to understand the master plan. So that's a story from my life that I can relate to about this stuff, but this stuff is still weird to me because um, <laughs> there's never uh, say if I was to personify this and call it God, uh, I, you never get to like see God face to face and shake him and say like, did I do a good job? Am I doing the right, am I doing the right thing? Did I like do a good job today? Yeah. You never get that like, like just, yes, you are on your path. Like you never get that. But somehow the breadcrumbs keep, keep showing up and the breadcrumbs make you feel like you're on the path. So does any of that make sense? Yeah, Is this does. what you're talking about? Yeah, it totally does. Okay. Um, so what's your relationship with this? Sometimes I get so overwhelmed, um, but I've, I've recently started to think of it as almost like a gift because every time you have something like that come and you get really excited by it, it's, it doesn't have to be a full-fledged movement, but if it later turns out to be awesome, but it's more like a moment that forces you to really look at your values and it's, and also reminding you what you want and what you want to spend your energy on. And mm -hmm. also reminding you that there's more out there. Like, cause I feel like a lot of work, meaningful work, creative work, whatever, is such a grind. It's like you sit down and you do it over and over and over and it's like not glamorous at all. Um, so when you have these like exciting moments of inspiration or you create a game or whatever it is it it's like a relief from the daily grind <laughs> yeah it is yeah so there's like i don't know and it's a messenger too it's kind of like you know this is something that excites you so you can piece out what is what is the part that excites me is it connecting with friends is it creating a movement is it the physicality like then you can really understand more about you know what you love and put that into your work. Um, do, do you use, yeah. So, so it's interesting because part of this is pain and pleasure and yeah. there's some Catholic in me that like just seeks out pain and like does the most painful thing. And somehow, somehow I feel like I'm being a good boy when I'm like experiencing maximum pain. Um, but uh, so it almost feels like a guilty pleasure to like have something that I really enjoy, I like fencing. Um, but, uh, but I almost wonder like if I lived my life the other way, if I was a hedonist and I just like pursued pleasure, uh, like what would happen? Like, I almost think my whole life would fall apart. Uh, do, do you, do you experience confusion around questions like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I, it's kind of like what I was talking about earlier about ease. It's like when it feels easy, I'm like, wait, am I doing something wrong? Um, but also, it's like creative process. The reason it's called the creative process is because if you take out the process part, it's like mm. madness, right? Like it, I think a lot of the, the jokes about like, is it crazy or genius? Like it becomes mm. genius when there is a really a process and some kind of grounding to what you're doing. And then, you know, if there isn't some process or practice or the, that's the pain part, right? Like if that's not there, then it is just pure madness in, in my opinion. So I say that again, that was interesting. If what's not there, it's pure madness. 
if the, there's no process or practice to creative work, um, yeah, then it's, it is more like on the hedonistic side, which is a bit of the more like, so process is something that you really process is interesting because it's very structured. It's yeah. not like you'd imagine the purely intuitive person would just be like free flowing, like, you know, what, what does the spirit want me to do right now? And you just have no structure, but you are process oriented enough that you say that if there's no process, it's probably madness. Yeah. Defend your position. <laughs> um, because of, like you said, like you get an inspiration, right? And, mm -hmm. or I'll get an inspiration and then I just go full fledged into that moment or that, mm -hmm. that spark. Mm -hmm. Then it, there's no focus. And then mm -hmm. the next inspiration comes and the next inspiration comes. And then there's a lot of unfinished things <laughs> that, I've, that will maybe never get done. Um, yeah. And yeah. also, but all this is your logical mind. It's like, okay, you know, if I, if I just follow the inspiration, I'll start a bunch of things and I'll never finish anything. And that's very logical. Yeah. Um, but then you're also obedient to the intuitive mind, which is like, no, start this. Yeah. So how do you, how do you weigh those? Um, I, I excelled it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so funny. It's like the logical and the intuitive are like such a part of your process. And, yeah. and yet somehow, you harmonize them. I try. I really try, but it's not easy all the time. Um, I allow myself a certain amount of like madness and then I put the rest of it on like a wait list. <laughs> so I have a, a wait list. Yeah. <laughs> basically, I have like a sheet and I have certain projects that I'm currently actively working on that I really care about and I want to finish. Oh my God. And I have a massive wait list of stuff that like anytime I get an inspiration, it goes on the, on the list. And when I finish something, I'm allowed to take anything off my wait list and start working on it. Mm -hmm. um, because how many, sorry, yawn. Uh, how many active projects do you allow yourself to work on? Um, they're kind of like, I think I have five right now. So um, I try number. not to keep it higher than that. And like, I try also to keep them balanced. Like some are physical, like exercise oriented, some are like more creative and some are more practical. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I started doing that because I was like, I was having trouble with focus and I was also having a lot of resistance because I was getting really excited about projects and die and, and everything I do, I like really dive fully in. I know. And yeah, that's, that's like great, but not great when there's 10 or 15 things. And then I'm like, okay, now I need to learn five languages and run. <laughs> like, it's just, it's like crazy. I just go really deep into everything. And so this was my way of allowing that, but also not having to say no to myself all the time. I was like, maybe later. And then later, sometimes yeah. I don't care about the thing that was the inspiration and I just take it off the list. Yeah, this is good. So here, give me some advice. So on this run I just had, uh, I totally got a flash of inspiration of like, yes, it is part of my mission in life to sue the state of California and the United States of America for, my in, like, for not allowing me to contract freely with my workers. Because uh, there's certain deal structures I know that I want to do and I know that everyone on my team would want that are like literally illegal. Um, and I think it's like totally unjust that like consenting adults can't make a decision legally because yeah. of the bullshit. Um, so anyways, I was like, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to like literally sue the government. It's going to be so fun. I like, I, I was like thinking which lawyers I know that like would do this with me and like how fun it would be and what a PR scandal would be and how fun. And, and then I like, you know, I just, I know that like, I don't have time for this. So, yeah. so somehow I feel spiritually you have to allow for magical thinking the magical thinking version of is uh obey the command like follow the idea let the muse tell you what to do and then trust that somehow by some chaos theory like you suing the government is going to result in an article that is going to result in like all these other things like coming into your life and these other things are going to, you know, uh, solve your other problems. And somehow it'll all just synergistically work. 
Yeah. Uh, the logical mind is like, that is not a plan that is like <laughs> such a bad idea and is like so irresponsible. And, um, and so uh, uh, the easy thing is um, to just let the idea go. It's like, it's almost like meditation. Like, oh, there's an idea, bye. Um, and just let it, let it wash over me. Um, but I somehow feel, I feel like I can do better than that. What's your advice? Um, what do you mean by you think you could do better than that? Like just I let feel, it go? Spiritually, I feel, I feel like somehow uh, there's a more evolved thing than just letting it go. Um, when there's something like that big that you don't want to release, I, for me, I just, yeah, create like a, a home for it. Like it's a Google folder, whatever. I don't care. Um, how you however you do your process but and then anytime more ideas or thoughts come I just add to that and sometimes there's pieces that you take out of it that will be useful later but it doesn't have to be in the same structure as like actually suing the government it might be an article you write it might be yeah. like working with I can just create a, I can just create a medium publication and sue the government in theory on paper <laughs> on my medium blog for like a while <laughs> yeah i mean but you never know like there could be yeah. policy change you could work with activists you could work with like there's endless ways that that could materialize so yep. i try to pay attention to what about this thing is exciting like is it all yeah. the flurry or is it like the massive challenge or is it like what is the what is the meat of like why that actual task itself is exciting because sometimes it's just yeah there's something else inside that is what you really want can i ask you a question that was such a good answer and i think you nailed it um and i think uh um i know what to do now which is like take some step and just like allow let see if that snowball will like gather more snow um but uh, it, it, it gave me a thought, which is, do you ever experience FOMO? Um, not really, but I used to really bad, but now I think I'm at a different, like minds, like in a different mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the new mindset? That I don't really know what the thing I missed out was anyways so i um, don't yep. really understand what i'm missing um and it doesn't make sense to miss something but that's what's so tantalizing about it it's like you don't know what you're not getting and yeah. uh and, and just because you don't know it it automatically sort of seems better sometimes yeah but it's just an anxiety producing feeling it feels terrible fomo feels really terrible mm -hmm. and so i've just tried to just say like, I made the choice to do this thing that I'm doing now instead and focus more on the choice I made. So it's just really about being more present, I think. Yeah, but for somebody who has imaginative as you, you have the ability to create like powerful uh, um, concepts in your mind that almost seem more attractive than real life. Yeah. And real, real life, like, I don't know, I'll speak for myself. Um, my imagination is so like out of control that uh, it's very easy for me to just see real life as just fucking boring. And for me to like, to just imagine like 50 other lives I could be living right now. I could be in Mongolia, like in a yurt, like riding a horse and like drinking yak's milk. Yes. I could, I could be like, like crushing spices in India and in some market. I could be, I could do so many things. I could be like skydiving, like doing special forces training in the middle of, Africa I don't know yeah. um uh that th th I guess the underlying question here and how it relates to confusion is how do you know you're in the right place how do you know you are in the room you're supposed to be in having the conversation you're supposed to be having mm -hmm. <laughs> um talking about the thing you're supposed to be talking about um how do you how do you come to a sense of peace and mm -hmm. serenity um instead of like the angsty confused like uh, i don't know if i'm in the right place um part of it is just trying to make better decisions like only committing to stuff that i want to commit to mm -hmm. 
that's part of it. Part of it is, yeah, just presence. Is like, mm -hmm. there really is no right. Mm -hmm. um, there just isn't. <laughs> There's no right. Whatever we're doing is right. And so mm -hmm. I just try to keep that as as truth in a way um, because there's endless options for every moment and we just pick the one we pick and that's that <laughs> you can't go back and unpick it so it's yeah it's twofold it's like make better choices up front and then accept the ones you made make better choices up front accept the ones you made um, that's so simple why doesn't it not why is it, does that work for you actually most of the most of the time yeah well i get really bad anxiety when i'm not allowing myself to when i don't have acceptance i think that's when i get anxious when i feel like i need to control everything like that's when i get anxious so if i just say okay i you know i already was able to control like my schedule for today or i made these decisions or whatever it is like that's probably all the level of control I actually need in a way um yeah so but it's like a, it's a practice right so yeah mm -hmm. I don't don't always do it but try <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um so you're you're in a period of transition yourself and actually haven't caught up with you about this because I know you're you're yeah. you probably you've probably already decided on a new job or about to make a decision because you've yeah. everyone wants to hire you of course <laughs> um but uh, you had a lot of options. You could have kept pursuing the acting career. You could have started another company. You could have, um, yeah. you, uh, you could have worked for any of these companies. Um, how do you apply these guiding mechanisms that you've developed um, to a decision like that? That's was it really easy for you? Was no. it easy? No, it no? wasn't easy. It was really hard. Um, I actually had to call my coach. I have a coach, and she helps me like check my own choices so just like bounce off what i say i want with mm -hmm. what i say i want um yeah hold hold you accountable ability partner yeah yeah so i try to um surround myself with people like that mm -hmm. and for me the choice was i think my number one value in general is freedom um so that's why we're such good friends <laughs> yeah <laughs> really it's it's such a powerful feeling and i i uh, it's so funny because given that it's such a big value for me uh it's i actually and my life is so unfree in a lot of ways uh, yeah. it's funny because once once you make free choices those choices end up trapping you in some responsibility then you don't you can't just keep making free choices yeah, yeah that's a it's a tough one because it's like it's like the same as we need a box in order to be free, kind of. And I yeah I, yeah I, yeah. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like pick yeah pick your build your gate, um, build your wall, but make sure it has a gate, right? So you can get yeah. it. Yeah. But um, I I think all of my decisions were around what will give me the most freedom. And actually I found like I need some more structure than I currently have, which is why I decided to go with a job for now. And then I can still pursue acting and everything and all my creative projects, but not be at the whim of like, yeah, the crazy inspiration sparks in the middle of the day or um, 10 clients like needing something at any moment, disrupting my day. And so, um, yeah, for me, it was just, it was actually once I remembered like, okay, you're making this decision to give yourself more freedom. Then the choice became really easy because it was like, this option will give me the most freedom right now. And yeah. And also just like try to remind myself that everything is needs to come from a place of where I'm at now, because I think there was like a lot of time where I try to make decisions based on where I want to be. And I'm deciding for like myself in three years, not deciding for myself right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, deciding for yourself in three years. I find that so hard yeah. um, uh, because I honestly can't think more than a month or two ahead. It's like I have the foggiest sense for how 2018 will look like for me. I mean, um, 
I mean it in like an aspirational way. It's like mm -hmm. you can imagine yourself like how you want to be or what you want to have accomplished or where you want to, yeah, like where you want to be in life. And sometimes I feel like it's easy to make a decision based on that version of me, not the version <laughs> of me that exists right now in this moment. So it's not really like where I think I'll be in three years. It's more like I'm making a decision based on an aspiration and not on reality. And, and right. So I make those yeah. two. And those are interesting ones to make because you don't, uh, you got to be careful what you wish for. It's like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have some idea in my head. Uh, I don't know. Francis in three years is like dating like a PhD with an Olympic gold medal who's like exited three companies who's like, um, uh, also like won the Olympics in gymnastics. Yeah. You know, it's like some absurd, like romantic aspiration. And then, uh, like, I'm like, I'm living in like 12 different cities simultaneously. Yeah. Like, uh, and, um, I don't know how, like, uh, <laughs> have like, like my career has exploded and, 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 and land. like, I don't know, like I've got like some like perfect, like martial arts body like i don't know like it's 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 i i almost don't know there's like if there's a slider bar mm -hmm. i don't know how to like not just go all the way to the right or like turn the volume all the way when it's like okay like if we're gonna play the aspiration game i might as well like ask for all the wishes yeah. like um so so do you how, do you are you a realistic aspirer are you like are no. you like me and just like want okay so you want everything so it's like what but is that, yeah, so how do you make those futuristic decisions? Um, I, well, I'm trying not to, actually. Like, that, I'm trying to remind myself, like, to be where I am. Um, because if I make futuristic decisions, then I'm in denial about my life. And those decisions never really work out because they're not grounded in, in reality. And yep. if I just am okay to say this is me now and this is where I'm at and I'm making this decision based on the reality. Somehow like all the stuff I want ends up happening anyways. It's just, mm. I'm not rushing it because we're not always ready for what we want. That's like mm. one part of it. And the other part is like what you said, be careful what you wish for because you could have that girlfriend but she might never have time to see you. Yeah. Or, you know, you never exactly. know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So like, yeah, yeah. So it's like we don't really fully understand what that aspiration means a lot of the time because we didn't put the work in to get there. Yep. Yep. Um, so I don't know. That was a long answer, but I guess I'm trying not to make those kinds of decisions. Yeah. And yet and yet you are aspirational though. It's it's funny. Yeah. Um it's let me see if I can put some words around it. Like I think you you're expressing a position I would describe as like um, deeply conservative and it's something I agree with. And I mean conservative, not in a political sense, but in a, an attitude that appreciates the intelligence of the way things are mm -hmm. um, like things are the way they are for like pretty good reasons. There's like all these forces that are pushing against each other that have resulted in like exactly this. And, and like we could want, things to be, I don't know, in some idealized thing in our, like the way we imagine it in our head, but uh, we actually should always respect the fact that like reality knows best. Like we, we probably shouldn't get what we want because um, yeah. so, but yet, but yet the answer is not don't aspire and don't reach. Um, so how do you bet? Like uh, you're, you're a person with a lot of, drive like energy um i think a lot of people don't like sometimes they don't see that in you because you're you're so like composed and um and uh soft spoken sometimes but if you actually pay attention to kendra she's like got the fire right um but like how do you channel that fire in into a path that um, is reaching for something, but even though you don't know what that something is. Yeah. Um, I think it's really about curiosity. Um, I just follow the curiosities, which are everywhere really, but like, uh, 
I find that if I'm curious or interested about something, then mm. there's something I don't know. There, it, mm. I'm really curious about something I fully understand. So maybe this gets back to confusion is like, you just don't understand it. And for me, like, I want to figure out like, how do things work? Why is this person that way? Like, mm. why is this happening? Um, and so it's part of growth mindset is just like always exploring what you don't know. And then, yeah, yeah eventually you, you can't help but grow. Um, and yeah. Yeah. So you're always on that edge between uh, what you know and what you, what you don't know. Um, and you're using what you know to help you crack uh, what, you, what you don't know. Um, and you're, you have all these ongoing investigations. Do you, are these in the spreadsheet somewhere where mm -hmm. you have like open questions or no? This is um, more like subconscious. Both. I think both. Uh, a lot of them are subconscious, but uh, it's also part of developing like a strong intuition because the more I observe and the more experiences I have, I feel like my intuition is better. Um, just cause there's more data for it to work off of in a way. Um, yeah. So there are, yeah, there's like bigger questions where yeah, I'll like add to them when I learn something. But I think a lot of it is just daily stuff like watching like couples or parents and kids interacting like on the bus or in a cafe is like you know you can't really put that down somewhere but it's just observing like how people are and and I think this is also why I really like acting is because it's really about behavior which tells you way more than what people say so um yeah I kind of got on a tangent but it's like good yeah, paying attention to those tiny things. They're tiny, tiny things, but they actually are really big if you pay attention. Um, and it goes back to, to what you were saying about, like, how daily life is boring. And I, I totally disagree with that, actually. Like, I, uh, good. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think daily life is insanely fascinating um, because of all these little tiny things. Like, if you pay attention, they're it's there's so many worlds happening like right around us that are so Can you show us one? <laughs> um i could try to describe one like like hmm, i didn't leave my apartment really today but um i was in a cafe once and there was a cut like a little family like a dad sitting and it was just like a really powerful moment because he looked so, 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 so stressed and he was sitting with his little daughter and like he had a baby in a little seat and they're just like eating lunch. Like that's a totally normal thing to do, like eat lunch at lunchtime. And he was just like in a different world, like completely checked out, like looked really overwhelmed. The little girl's like just playing, whatever. And yeah. he's like sleeping and I could just see in his face and in his mind, like he was struggling with something. And then the little girl, like just took his hands and like connected with him and everything oh. in that moment changed. And he was back in the room, like his entire mood shifted. He started engaging with his kids. Like the baby woke up, they were all playing. That was like an, it was a nothing moment, right? Like they're just eating lunch. But if you really pay attention, there's like all these shifts. It was like a real moment of love. And that little girl like got her dad out of some mental loop, you know, who knows what it was about, but there's stuff like that all the time. That was such a good yeah. story. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> yeah, I nearly yeah. cried watching. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, I, can, I can connect with that, even though I don't have any kids. Yeah. Um, I have either interacting with kids or interacting with friends or I don't know. Yeah. The, the world somehow pulls me out of my head. Yeah. Um, and the problem is I, um, if you're a bird, if you're being, if you're burdened by something, uh, as soon as that moment ends, like, mm -hmm. like 15 minutes later, that guy was back in his head, back mm -hmm. in the same hell that he had created for himself there. Yeah. Um, and those hells aren't entirely of our own making. I mean, I know that there's a school of thought that says it's all in your mind and like you, you could, but 
they're, so, they're somewhat connected to reality. And so his, re- I'm just going to make this up, but his reality might be shit. I like can't make rent next month. Uh, that means I might have to like quit this job and like move into another city. Like, uh, and like, uh, I am a single father and like, so I don't know, like it might be like something actually kind of like extreme. Now, maybe like if he was super enlightened, he, uh, he would just be like, everything is well, it will all work out. But I don't know. I think, I think life somehow, like somehow there are moments and seasons that are pretty, pretty tough. Um, so so going back to the ordinary reality thing and your like curiosity and confusion, your relationship with both curiosity and confusion, pain and pleasure, the future, yeah. the present. Um, how do you, how do you manage stress? <sighs> um, yoga. I've never seen you stressed out, but I know that you, I know that you just hide it well. Yeah. I'm good at hiding it. That's probably more the truth. Um, I, I, yeah, like I just am obsessive about self care, and I try not to give myself extra stress because I feel like the world there's enough things in the world that are stressful. Like I try not to add to my stress pile. Um, but I, yeah, like f- movement is massive for me. Like yoga, going for walks. Like I don't really. I walk almost everywhere in the city like even if I have a meeting in Soma I walk like if I can't if I have time um just to be moving I think that is a huge part for stress and clearing like my mind too um swimming and then I do like these psychosomatic acting which is like working you emotion. don't get bored of these things like walking you don't get bored of walking in the city even though you've walked in the city so many times no I get lost in my head like I start like making up stories or like, I don't know, playing uh-huh. or whatever or observing stuff. Um, yeah. it, the time goes really fast actually, like for me at least. Um, yeah, movement. And then I do acupuncture. Like I haven't been going recently and I need to start going back, but I used to do it every week. Um, and that has helped me a ton with stress management. And I meditate in the morning and I journal and like, I basically, if I'm starting to get anxious about something, I like write a letter to myself about it and then I try to be done with it. So, cause sometimes like you just have to tell your brain to shut up. <laughs> yeah. So, that's, I just yeah. do, I, like write a letter to my brain. Like, thank you for trying to help me, but I don't need your help anymore. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so in, in investing yeah. in investing there's a concept called alpha and alpha is like beta is um market performance uh and then alpha is like where you disagree with the market and and you either perf- you, you perform better than the market or worse than the market mm-hmm. um because you're 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 taking a different position um and uh i'm interested in like where you disagree or, um, or where you take a different position than reality. So, um, uh, I don't know, like, could you open up Twitter right now and like take some random comment? You don't need to say who it's from and then say it like, I want you to call bullshit on something okay. and, and just so I can like enter your mind about how you like react to react in disagreement. And then, um, uh, yeah, let's do that exercise. Okay. Let me look on Twitter really quick. Okay. Uh, yeah, because you have moments like I have them all the time where I'm like, that I totally disagree with that. And like I feel like um because we, we're spending so much of our lives on screens, uh-huh. all these words are coming at us. Words, 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 words. And it's like those words are full of opinions and ways of ways of thinking that may not be my way of thinking. Yeah. And so sometimes sometimes I need to like ground myself in my own reality and just say like I totally disagree with that um so I I wonder how you process that okay I'm looking the problem is with social media is that we kind of like it feeds you stuff it knows you like so yeah there's nothing you don't like well I'll have to like look at the trends or something because my feed is like pretty in line 
right now. Um, okay, <laughs> breaking news. I don't agree with Christmas music. <laughs> okay, talk to me about that. <laughs> First of all, it starts way before Christmas. Yeah, like now. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Also, everybody loves it, but it to me is the most obnoxious thing on earth. Like I can do. And I feel like I'm totally the Grinch, but I really just don't understand. <laughs> Christmas music is confusing to me. <laughs> okay, so how, so now that you feel that way, like what do you do about it? I avoid. <laughs> you avoid it? I actually, like, I'm not really a shopper, so that helps a lot because it's mostly at, like, stores and stuff and restaurants and whatnot. Um, but even, like, the an Uber I was in the other day had Christmas music on, and I was like, why? Like, please turn that off. I don't need to listen to Christmas music in November. Yeah. And, and so that's something... I would, I've, I've known you for years and has never come up. Um, and, and I'm, I'm interested in the inside outside barrier between like what, what people's actual internal experience is and like whatever comes through this narrow pipe of words and whatever comes through the like, uh, harder to interpret pipe of like behaviors and gestures yeah. and such. Like that's something about your experience of life. I just, I would never have been able to connect with unless you had told me that you fucking hate it. Um, so do you feel alone in, 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 in like those like secret little thoughts? Like I'm sure you, Bastion knows that, but yeah. um, is that, is that enough um, though? Like it, you mean it alone in a good way? Like, like, no, not in a good way. Uh, like in a isolated or yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, imagine you weren't dating Bastion um yeah. then uh nobody might know that nobody might know how much you hate Christmas music <laughs> and uh and it's a silly example but it's it's like a way that you can feel alone because like the whole world is playing fucking Christmas music and yeah, you're just exactly. ah, shut up yeah can't everyone see how horrible this is <laughs> yeah I feel like that a lot actually with lots of different things um yep exactly it's not really about the yeah silly Christmas music example, yeah. but it's about all the other things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's more, I don't really care if people share the, share the experience or the feeling with me, but if they don't understand, I think that's when it feels lonely. Um, is like, mm. or when it's misperceived, it's like, what kind of person doesn't like Christmas music? Like, this is a silly example, but there's, like, a lots horrible of... Horrible person. Yeah, so it's, like, I don't know. I guess if it comes with judgment or misunderstanding, then it feels lonely. But if people understand it and they're just, like, cool with it, then I don't... It doesn't feel lonely. If that made any sense. <laughs> yeah. It did, it did make sense. Okay, so you call bullshit on something. Um... Uh, on the subject of the unexpressible things, mm -hmm. um, if you were hit by a bus mm -hmm. and poor thing, um, and you were bleeding out and, um, I came to ask you one final interview question while you were bleeding out. And I was asking you a question like, what unique thought slash feeling is dying with you right now that oh, doesn't exist anywhere in the world? What is that gem of a thing that is contained within Kendra that is contained within <laughs> somebody else? That's a really good question. <laughs> because part of me feels like nothing is that unique in a way. Yeah, it's I know. Exactly. Like Horrible. Yeah. I'm just one of seven billion people on the planet. I'm just an ant. I think what's unique of inside of all of us is like our combination of things that are not unique. Oh, so, that's interesting. Um, for me, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I 
I really am trying to think of it, but I think, um, I guess I, I, maybe you're getting to like who the core, like what's at the core of me. I don't know. Um, yeah. I think for me, I'm really interested in just like human beings. Like what, like, what does it mean to be a human being? Like there's a lot of behaviors and things we do that I don't think are very human. So, yeah. um, yeah. I guess that's like part of my, like what, why I do anything I do is like just trying to figure that out. Not even, yeah, it's like, I'm confused about that. So I want to figure it out. Um, so expand, expand, expand on that more. Like uh, you're bleeding out and you tell me that like, you really want to understand more about um, uh why humans aren't fully expressing their natural yeah i yeah i think for yeah i guess if i like died now i would be afraid of like did i like did i fail to be my full self mm. and did my mm -hmm. friends fail to be their full self and like did my yeah. family either and i think all of us fail to be our full selves all the time yes so we do it's so hard. I don't know anyone who does it. So like when someone figures out how to do it, let me know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's almost like here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my answer. If I was bleeding out, yeah. um, there's an album that's called the beyondness of things. And it's a compilation of um, John Barry's uh, screen um, screenplay soundtrack um, tracks and the album is romantic capital R in the extreme. It is just, it is like, it's like he tried to turn beauty into music. And it's so, it's it's almost the point of cliche. It's almost ridiculous. If you're in a certain mood and you play that album, you're just gonna laugh at how absurd it is. <laughs> but if you're in the mood of the album, it makes you wanna cry. It, it like, and, and I honestly feel like that, there's nothing I will ever make that is going to be greater than that album. Mm. Um, there is, if I ever make anything that reminds people of that album, it will, that will be the greatest achievement. Um, and, uh, and so, um, uh, I think it's like the, how does this, okay. So, so th here's the thing though. I, so I've had this thought, right. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that album is kind of a lie because if, if I'm like some Pokemon and I, like my spirit animal is that album and like um, that album isn't the entire human experience. Right. So even if I fully embody that album, it's like that album is not jazz, mm -hmm. is not like R and B, isn't, isn't all these other ways of being. Um, and so it feels like to be fully expressed, um, even like if I could fully be that one color if i could fully be purple mm -hmm. i wouldn't be all these other things and um yeah and so so i know that there's multitude like we contain multitudes right there's like a cliche yeah. great hippie quote um and yeah. you can yeah i love it too and and yeah. you can contain multitudes but like you have to make an interesting choice every day about like which kendra to fully express because you have to like you have to not fully express all these other kendras mm -hmm. I'm sure there's like a rage monster Kendra in you somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Like there probably is, but I have this default mode where I just go straight to sad. Um, really? Yeah. Oh. Because I like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I want to be really angry, but I feel like so much empathy, like for the person that, or the situation. It's like, no. Yeah. Like yeah. that shooting in Vegas, like mm -hmm. I just felt so sad for that guy who did it because he was so lonely and so isolated in the world that he went to Vegas and like shot up a concert. That to me was the tragedy really, like more than, I mean, yeah, all the people that got shot is really sad too, but the fact that a human being was at that level of like that I can't even feel angry. I just feel so sad about like how terrible that must feel to be him. And that's my problem with anger is like, I cannot. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But see, I feel that way about 
I mean, if you pursue the empathy, the empathic approach, yeah, you, there's no enemies in the, anymore in the world. There's no bad guys. Like you just, they're just people you feel sorry for. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's a weird way to live. Um, yeah. It, uh, um, yeah. So. Yeah. I'm working you, on it because it's actually. You don't that you say, <laughs> what? I said uh, I'm working on it because it's actually gotten me into like bad situations because like there's mm. places where I should leave or have stronger boundaries or whatever and I don't because I like feel for the person and I want to give them more chances or I want to help them or and I really should just be like bye <laughs> mm. um yeah so it's not always a good way of being I don't think like it's it's a burden sometimes yeah mm -hmm. um and is that the dominant way of being for you or is there another way of being that is like even bigger or i mean like i i wrote i wrote a series of things yeah. exploring different personas in my psyche yeah. and then you start to realize oh shit there's like at least seven people who live inside of me you know um uh you sort of it's almost like playing piano you have to choose which ones you want to play so yeah. like if sadness is one of your characters, what are the other characters and how do you choose which ones to play and how you listen to them? Yeah. Um, I'm working on a, like a project, a persona project too, actually. It's very interesting. Really? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Oh. Um, a photographer friend of mine and I are, we're interviewing people and like, um, during the interview, she's taking portraits and we're like basically breaking down like identity based on these series of interviews and portraits. And um, it's amazing because you can like, we get these beautiful photos of people when they're expressing these different personas, right? Because we're kind of going through like, what makes you you? Um, but anyways, I, the, for your question, um, I think that, yeah, this like sadness and empathy is probably like my default. Like I, I, I'm probably there most of the time. Um, but there's like, I, there's like a massive controlling bitch like inside of me too. And that one comes <laughs> up a lot also. <laughs> like, a well, massive controlling bitch. That is amazing. Sometimes I, 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 like, bitch, I don't think I've ever had the pleasure. Yeah, it's there. Um, but like, it's, more on myself actually than on other people, I think, but, um, the control stuff. Um, and I think there's like a, like a, like a really playful, like, like kind of comedy side of me that I've really suppressed, like for a lot of my life because it just ne never served me in a way, if that makes sense. Like yeah. I was always rewarded for being nice and for being sweet and being practical and being useful. And so like yep. those things I think dominate and dominant like, traits yeah. right me yeah. too yeah uh I had like three of my buddies over for Thanksgiving and I've never felt more boyish in my life <laughs> yeah even when I was a boy I didn't feel yeah. that boy it was it was like really uh, amazing I, the kind of release I felt to like express these other parts of me we're just we we're practically giggling like on like stupid inside jokes uh like we were calling um we were calling we had a code word for girls and it was igor and there's like there's some bullshit weird story about that and we're like oh look at that igor over there and it was just like just the just the sentence was uh, so absurd we were just practically dying uh and um I, I don't remember laughing that much um over that little uh like ever um so yeah. Um, yeah. It makes me wonder like whether I should cultivate that like all the time or whether it's okay for me to be like kind of serious, stern, sad, and grave. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I just, I try to cultivate it too, but it's like, it doesn't work if I just try to make it happen. So I just, I think the cultivation part is like when it happens to allow it instead of like shoving mm. it back down. Um, yeah. And it's weird, like those things, like those, like all these like personas or parts of us that we have, like sometimes yeah. they come with so much shame. And I'm like, why do I feel shame around like being silly? Like that doesn't make sense. Like yeah. there's nothing shameful about being fun or having fun. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes those like guilt or shame, like those feelings come with it. And like, 
So for me, it's unpacking that and like rewiring that negative association that it's not helpful anymore and like is actually wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, one question and then we're going to do a finale. Okay. So last, last question uh, before the finale is um, Achilles was given a choice by the gods uh, to live a long, happy life full of blessings and family and pleasure and a good good house and like prosperity and just live to the end of your days and die happy mm -hmm. and the other choice was like death and glory at a young age and just no warrior ever will achieve the glory that you will have you'll be the ultimate warrior he chose death and glory um now you can call it a bullshit choice uh you could you could call the whole story like overwhelmingly masculine and i'd agree with both of those descriptions mm -hmm. but um I do sometimes think that I have like a choice all, all at all times to like explode, 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 be the fucking explosion. Ah, you know, like you, you can live a crazier life. You can always choose to live a crazier life. Like, I don't know, like I could find, um, I could find some like weird nudist colony and like go like live there for like a few months and that'll, that'll make my life weirder. Like yeah. I can definitely <laughs> always make your, you could definitely always make your life weirder. Um, yeah. and, and in a way it's like, you only have one life to live. Why not lead the weirdest fucking life you can and just pack in as much experience as you can, right? Or you could sort of like, I don't know, I could just sit at home tonight and do some Duolingo and read a little bit and like go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the gods are giving you a choice. How do you choose? I go live the weird life. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I think wow. so. Wow. Yeah. And what does weird, weird look like for you? How do you... Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like in a lot of ways I already have. Hmm? Have, you been to, have you been to Burning Man? No. I always miss have it. Have you been like, to Burning Man? See, no. okay. You have it. Another reason why we are friends. We are not burners. But like, that would be, if you live the weird life and you haven't been to Burning Man in San Francisco, like, it's like, guilty. But why is that the weird life? I don't think so. Like, exactly. I've, had, I've had way more weird experiences than a lot of them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I can actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure I have. I think because, like, weird is part of, like, the, the confusion, right? Like, you can't explain some stuff. It's just straight up weird. Like, you can have a weird moment any day. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's also just a part of being open. Like, I think if you're seeking weird experiences and they're controlled, then it's not that weird actually. I don't know. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. So you want to be the explosion. All right, great. So here's the finale. Here's the finale. Um, I'm going to thank you. Thank you so much for thank doing you. this weird, weird interview uh, and for getting into like messy topics where there's no easy answer mm -hmm. uh, and for getting into the weird inner, inner kind of like recesses of the mind mm -hmm. and the feelings. Um, and I loved it and I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And then as a finale, um, I want you to ask as many questions as you want for as long as you want. And so you can't think of any more questions. And then when there's, when there's a long silence, we'll just end it. Just like, <laughs> okay. End. All right. So it's the, it's like the question crescendo. Yeah. Go ahead. And you can ask everything that confuses you, everything you don't understand, everything you want to know. Like you can pretend like I'm a genie in a bottle or like God is going to answer all your questions or whatever it is. All the questions go. Okay, um, what's better, night or day? Am I just going and going and going? No Let's answers. Go. I just no answer. answers. Ask them. Okay. Oh, this is so hard. Why is this so hard? <laughs> I, know. I thought that first question was so good too. <laughs> I really wanted an answer. Why am I not getting answers? Um, mm -hmm. Why are there so many social constructs and why do we accept them? Um, why do we feel differently than we are? I don't know if that made sense. Did that make sense? <laughs> um, 
why am I in this city and not some other city? Um, why is our next phase of evolution not biological? Um, and what does that mean for human humanity, humans? Um, how do we how do we collectively create uh, I guess like an inner like a sense of peace? Um, how do we have yeah, how do we have collective peace? Is time real? Are we real? <laughs> what is real anyways? <laughs> to a dark place. <laughs> Um. <laughs> um, I want to know what I don't, what do I not know? what really is like true freedom and how do we like rationalize or line up everybody's truths um, and is it possible to live fully in truth I think we can end there. <laughs> that was a good, that was a good question prayer. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>